Greetings, students from Australian University. This is Professor Wen, course professor for EDU 505. So we are now in week three, and I want to give you instructional support on what you need to do for week three um, in EDU 505. So in week three of EDU 505, there are three reading tasks. <clears throat> and the first reading task is about students need love and affection, experience of a female school leader with the challenges of Syrian refugee education. The second reading task is about introduction to deconstructing privileges in the classroom, teaching a uh, racialized pedagogy. A seat at the table, African-American youth perceptions of K-12 education. Week three in EDU 505, there's a written assignment on creating a training presentation on the issues of diversity and inclusion. For this assignment, you have to do a one-page policy document, which is to be attached to the PowerPoint that you have to create on various aspects of diversity and inclusion. So week three is going to be a very busy week. So therefore, I encourage you to be proactive so you can balance your time with work, family, and school. Remember, the assignments, the discussion block, these are due on Sunday at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And your assignment for week three is worth 159 points. So the first assignment focuses on students needing love and affection, experience of a female school leader. So this article talks about uh, how the administrator, the school principal is a female and how the school and the school administrator faces face challenges um, of current issues uh, in education, especially how the school uh, welcomes new addition to the school population, especially the students uh, from Syria who already face challenges of leaving their country um, leaving behind a war-torn nation, come to a new place to learn. Uh, they have to learn a new language. Uh, they have to learn how to socialize. They have to learn new cultures and many different uh, perspectives of life. <clears throat> so the female principal task with uh, educating the new addition of students who were from Syria, um, who were refugees uh, in a new place. <clears throat> Being a female administrator of a school faces many opposition from many um, different aspects of the community, ranging from um, male parents, ranging from um, teachers, male teachers, uh, who think that being a female has no place in leading the school, uh, in responding to the challenges that the school face, uh, in addition to um, helping the new students to overcome the issues of being uh, new students at a new school. So that is what that article is about. 
And the next article talks about the construction privilege in the classroom, teaching as a racialized pedagogy. So pedagogy relates to the method of teaching. So this article talks about how racial tensions and societal divisions have been on the rise in the past several years. Um, so now what teachers have to do to make sure that all students are included and that diversity is embraced in the, cl in the classroom and that not one single student is entitled to uh, many other things um, over the other student. So how teachers can go about to deconstruct the issues of privilege and race in the classroom. Teaching is, the article mentioned about how teaching is linked to some form of teacher design. Uh, and this is so true that uh, sometimes teachers have preferences on what they want to teach, preferences on how they deliver the instruction. Uh, because of their desire, because of their differences, they overlook many aspects of inclusion and diversity. Not intentionally. So the article is powerful. It discusses about the strategies that teachers can practice um, to ensure that the issues of privilege is not taken lightly in the classroom. And then the next article talks about a seat at the table, African-American youth perspective of K-12 education. So there you go. Um, make sure that you read these three articles so you can have um, knowledge of the current issues um, in education so we can continue to implement best practices in including instructional strategies and design and methods so we can implement um, design, implement and evaluate instructional activities for our students. Now, in week three, you have a written assignment and the written assignment is on creating a policy for inclusion and diversity. In addition to the policy document, you have to come up with a PowerPoint presentation. So together, you submit one submission, one document, one article, one file for this assignment. Do not, su do not submit separate submission. So before you do the assignment, make an effort to read the article on sealing off Central High. What are school obligations in a social media world? Case studies on diversity and social justice education. So read these two articles so that you can have uh, firsthand information on how you can put um, the policy document together. So basically, for this audit, for this assignment, you need to make sure that you include a one page single Microsoft Word document um, on a policy discussing how your school will address uh, equality, diversity, and inclusion of all staff, especially the students. Um, make sure that you outline. Make sure that you outline how the organization is going to uh, implement uh, this policy. So you need to have an outline first, and then you need to write it out on a um, single space, at a Word document. Then after that, you need to put together a PowerPoint where you have to discuss um, an explanation of diversity and inclusion, where you have to include strategies 
for fostering diversity and inclusion within the school environment and classroom setting. You have to offer tips for how to deal with situations similar to what is presented in the case study here. All right. So your slide needs to include 10 to 12 slides, excluding the cover page. You have to have a cover page. Now, you don't need to use uh, Pressy. Just create a PowerPoint and submit. If you want to use Pressy PowerPoint presentation, you are welcome to do so. So again, you see here, make sure that you have a title slide. That's your cover page. And whatever resources that you use to supplement, to enhance your argument, to enhance your idea, you need to use the Strayer writing standards and cite your work accordingly. If you have used, uh, if you use your work from previous assignment, you need to cite yourself. If you're not, it's still considered plagiarism. All assignments will be checked for plagiarism. So make sure that you cite accordingly. Now, for the sake of this assignment, I already posted, I already posted a template of the PowerPoint. You are welcome to use the template. Uh, make sure you change the date. You can change the font. Uh, you can change the background color, but make an effort to address the slide based on the component, based on the instructional rubrics. If you don't follow the rubrics, and I don't see you include these components, I cannot give you the points for your assignment. So again, for the sake of this assignment, you need to create these two things first. So for the first part, you need to make an outline. Make an outline of the uh, diversity and inclusion policy. Then you need to write it out on a Word document, one page, single space. And after that, you need to create your PowerPoint presentation. So your PowerPoint presentation needs to include this. Your first slide is your cover slide. And your next slide is um, the outline, the outline of the policy. The third slide has to be the policy document. Then you need to include the slides, the slides for um, an explanation. You can have two slides. Then you need to have the slides for strategies. And you need to have the slides for tips on how to deal with situation. So when you have a problem, what are some of the tips? And then number, the next one will be your reference page. Now, according to um, state uh, Australia writing standard, we use the term sources for the reference. So the last slide needs to be the source page. This is where you include all the references that you use to supplement your, your ideas. So here I have posted an example of the slide. So this is your cover page. This is your table of content page. You can include this part of your slide page. Then your next slide 
your next slide, then you explain. You need to include two slides where you have to explain. Then you need to have three slides where you include the strategies for diversity and inclusion. Then you need to have three slides for tips or recommendations on the situation similar to the case study. And you finally conclude your presentation with the source slide. So this will give you roughly 10 to 13 slides, okay? And again, an outline looks like this. Okay, an outline looks like this. And then your one page document looks like this. So make sure that you include your outline and your one page policy attached to this PowerPoint presentation. Here are some tips on the do's and the don'ts. Do address each component, include one or two visual image, use bullet point. You see how I have bullet point? These are called the bullet points. It makes everything so attractive. And you see how I balance my, 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 my writing? You see how the text is balanced with the slide. As you can see here, I'm spacing out my visual images. So I'm spacing out my visual images. So my slide, you see how I use my text bullet? I differentiate the bullet for different ideas. This is my main idea. This is my sub idea or my secondary idea. So I use different bullets. Um, use balanced spacing. Be consistent with the font size and type. Don't use different font. It's, it's creating a distraction to the readers. So you have to be cognizant of your audience. Make it neat, organized, and attractively pleasant to the eyes. Here are the don'ts. Don't overdo the special effects. Don't leave the space unbalanced. Basically like, for example, if this is your slide and you might include your writing here, your writing here, and your writing here. It looks so not balanced. You need to make sure that your slide is balanced. Don't write a paragraph. This is a PowerPoint presentation. You list the key points but not the entire paragraph or put everything on it because the audience don't like to read everything on the PowerPoint presentation. They only want the key points. But don't mention one or two words. It has to be a statement, a short statement. Don't use hard to read color combinations and fonts. Don't copy and paste any ideas. Don't avoid the audience. Know your audience. Don't clutter the slides. Don't wait until the last minute to do your assignment. Then you rush and you will not have a good looking PowerPoint presentation. So by all means necessary, if you need help, contact me via calls, text, or email. This is Professor Wynn, course instructor for EDU 505.